All right, we got a bunch of theorems to throw at you. Uh, everything dealing with parallel lines, and basically what we're going to see is we can set up a lot of proportions uh, when we get parallel lines. Uh, but really, most of them make sense. Okay, if you just kind of look at it and think a bit about it for a little bit, they really make sense. So, for example, our first one, the triangle proportionality theorem. So, if I got two parallel lines, B, E, and C, D, okay, and they basically got two transversals going through them. Uh, I got a transversal of A, C here, and I got a transversal of A, D going through the two parallels. What happens is, basically, the parts of those transversals, I can end up setting up proportions. So if I look, there's a couple ways I could set it up. So well, if these two are parallel, if BE and CD are parallel, I could say that AB over BC is equal to, well, AB would correspond to what on the other transversal? Well, AE and BC would correspond to what on the other transversal? ED. They would be proportional. They're not congruent but they would be proportional. Okay, that's one way I could set up. The other way I could have set it up is I could do the way they correspond. So I could say like AB over AE, because these ones correspond, and then I have to set that equal to, well, BC first, because I have AB on top, and they're on the same transversal over ED. Either way is fine. Um, most of the time we deal with this first way here, don't remember with proportions, there's multiple ways to set them up, as long as it all um, makes sense, how it kind of corresponds with each other. So let's go ahead and use that right away. So in triangle RST, well, they're parallel. It's saying that RT and VU are parallel, so that means their proportion, their parts are proportional. So I can set it up all, you know, depending on how I write my first ratio will depend how I write my other one. So if I say eight over three, all right, that RV matches up with what? the TU on the other transversal. So that's what has to go on top on the other one. And it looks like the three kind of matches up with the X, so I have to have the X on bottom there. So you just gotta follow, just look closely, see where they match up, where they correspond. And now it's just our cross products. We got eight X and three times 12 is 36. And divide by eight, which gives us 4.5. 4.5. Next thing, we can just look at it the converse of that. Well, if I'm stating that the purport or the parts are proportional, so AB over BC is equal to AE over ED, if I say that their parts are proportional, then I know that BE would be parallel to CD. Okay, it's just the, the opposite way. Show that there's proportional parts to state that two lines are parallel. And if we take a look at something like that, Right here, I got a triangle DEF, that big guy. DH is 18, so I'm gonna write that in, 18. HE is 36, okay? And then over here it says DG is half of GF. DG is half of EF. So I don't know what they are. I mean, if this is eight, that's half of this. That'd be 16, okay, so on and so forth. If this was 10, this would be 20. Okay. And I can set up a proportion. It gets kind of confusing. Uh, i got to bring a variable into play. So let's just think about it, though. If they both follow the same rule, if the smaller piece is half of the bigger piece, then we would say that the lines are parallel. Well, let's look at the other side. Is the smaller piece half of the bigger piece? You bet it is. 18 is half of 36. So I know that, yes, these are parallel. And that's all I'd have to do. And really, to set this up, I could have done just like I did before, like 18 over 36 equals, well, I don't really have anything, so i got to bring in some variables. So, for example, if this is x, this would be 2x, right? So it would be x over 2x. Well, what happens to my x's? They just cancel. So there's an imaginary 1 up there. So it ends up being, you know, 36 times 1, which is 36, and 2 times 18, which is 36. So yeah, they're parallel, right? If they're proportional, it's parallel. So that's another way to do it. I could bring in variables into play. I like to just look at it and see if it makes sense. It, takes, it saves a little bit of time. Uh, we also have a mid-segment of a triangle. This is kind of the, the one term you need to know, mid-segment. A mid-segment, well, it's a segment with endpoints 
that are midpoints of a triangle. Well, we better take a look and see what that means. So I'm going to use my magic board here. Magic board, give me a triangle. All right, thank you. Okay, so let's take a look. Uh-oh. He hid some of it. There we go. All right. So endpoints that are midpoints of the triangle. Well, let's draw out all my midpoints. Midpoint, midpoint, uh, midpoint. Let's label these guys. We'll just say D, E, F. How about that? So bang, mid-segment, mid-segment, mid-segment. There we go. Okay, well, the cool part about these mid-segments is not that they're just from midpoint to midpoint, but let's take a look here. I want to look, for example, at this one right here, DF, and the side that's parallel with it right here, BC. So let's look at DF and BC. There's a kind of a cool rule here. DF is actually half of BC. So the mid segment is half the distance of the segment that's parallel with it. So same thing with DE. That would be half of AC, this whole thing right here. So DE would be half of AC. And the same thing with the last one. If I take a look at, where's my last one here? FE, FE would be half of the segment that's parallel to it, AB. So half of AB. Cool little rule for that. So mid segment. So let's use that here. In the figure, DE and EF are mid segments. So here's a mid segment, midpoint to midpoint. Here's a mid segment, midpoint to midpoint. And just don't worry if it doesn't look like it's uh, drawn to scale, because not all your shapes are drawn to scale. For me, this F almost doesn't look like a midpoint. Well, it is because it said that EF's a mid-segment. So I have to just believe that, hey, that's a midpoint. Well, let's find what AB is. Well, I know that. If I find AB, well, I know the mid-segment that's parallel is 5. So that's got to be 10, right? Because the mid-segment is half of that. Didn't even have to do any work with that. All right. What about for FE? Well, let's see here. FE, the side that's parallel to it across, BC I know is 18, so that's, the mid-segment is half of it, so that's going to be 9. All right, got it, good. And lastly, angle AFE. Let me erase some of my stuff here. It's getting all confusing. Angle AFE, where's that at? Right here, angle AFE. Well, how in the world am I going to find that? Well, what do we notice? Our mid-segment and the side opposite, aren't they parallel to each other? So let's extend these guys. So I got this guy. I got this guy. Well, this, these two parallels are cut by a transversal right here. And we know this guy is 87. Well, these would be what? Alternate interior angles. So this also has to be 87 degrees. So remember, anytime you have parallel lines, Right? You're always thinking alternate interior, alternate exterior, corresponding, right? Those are all congruence, and then consecutive interior that add up to 180. So there we go, just using our information about mid-segments. A couple more for you. Proportional parts of parallel lines. This one should make sense. It's kind of like our first one. If I have three parallel lines, any transversals that go through, I can set up proportional statements. So for example, I can say AB. I'll just put that over the other part on that transversal, which is BC. I could set that equal to the red one. Well, AB matches up with what? Looks like DE. And BC matches up with EF. Right? They're not congruent, but they are proportional. I can set up a proportion. And that works. I could draw on any transversal. Man, I could draw on a transversal that looks like this right here. And if I gave it new points... Let's say X, Y, and Z, right? I could set up another proportion. I could even say AB over BC is equal to, well, AB matches up with ZY, and BC matches up with YX. So any transversal would work, th work there. They are all proportional. I also have one other thing. If the transversal ends up making congruent segments, then no matter what transversal I draw in, um, they will also be congruent. So let's take a look. So right now I have three parallel lines. And if AB is congruent to BC, then automatically any other transversal 
DE would be congruent to EF. They're not actually the same as AB and BC, but they're equal to each other. The parts are equal to each other. So if I drew in another transversal, let's say I drew in one like way over here, I know that its parts would be congruent to each other. As long as one transversal has congruent parts, then all the transversals have congruent parts. Let me finish that off. DE would be congruent to EF. So just a couple things. So let's use both those things that we just looked, looked at. In the figure, larch, maple, and nuthatch, nut, nut hatch, nuth, one of those three, I don't know, streets are all parallel. It, the figure shows the distance in between city blocks. Find X. Uh, it's right there, done. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen that joke before. Pretty funny, haha. Anyway, all right, I got three parallels. That means the parts are proportional. So however you want to set it up, I'm just going to go ahead 26 over 13. Well, if I do that, 26 matches up with X, right? Because they're in the, between the same parallel. So I'm going to put X on top over, well, 13 matches up with 16. So 16 goes on bottom. And there we go. And it's just solving your proportion like we have been. So 16 times 26, which gives us for 16, 13 times X is 13X. And those would be equal. So we divide by 13 to give us 32. So x equals 32. And it doesn't give us a specific unit, right? It doesn't say miles or feet or anything. So just leave it as 32. And there we go. And let's use that last uh, theorem that we came up with. So it's showing that I got parallel lines. And on one of the transversals, the parts are congruent. So that means these have to be congruent to each other as well. right? They're not all congruent, but each transversal has the parts congruent. So I'm going to have two separate equations. I could set 3x minus 7 equals to x plus 5. And then I'll also have these ones right here. 9y minus 2 equals 6y plus 4. And now it's just our algebra. So let's rock the first one out. Add 7 to both sides. Minus the x for both sides. And it looks like we got 2x equals 12. So x equals 6. Done with that one. And over here, getting our y's to one side, so subtract 3y. And let's bring this minus 2 to the other side, so we add 2 to both sides. So we got 6y equals, why did I subtract 3y? It should be 6y that I subtract. So what happens when you work too fast? So minus 6y, minus 6y. There we go. So this is really 3y equals 6. And then solve for y, divide by 3, y equals Ooh, that's an ugly two. There we go, All right? So most of us are solid with our algebra. Uh, so there you go. All right, so uh, basically the things that make sense, right? The proportional statements that you can set up. Um, the only one, the mid segment, just know that it's half of the side that's opposite it. There you go.